occasion of Guyana's 55th independence anniversary. I extend greetings to all my fellow Guyanese, including those in the diaspora. Political independence from our colonial masters in 1966 introduced some freedoms, including important symbols of nationhood, such as our national flag, our national anthem, our motto, and other emblems of nationhood. But what it did not permit was economic independence. The 55 years that followed independence were marked by significant points. We became a republic. We nationalized the commanding heights of our economy. But as was the case in many post-colonial countries of that era, we struggled across racially charged political lines to realize true independence. Today, for the first time in our history, economic independence is a real possibility, given our abundant oil and gas resources. The possibility, however, has come about when the issues of negative global consequences of fossil fuel are a growing concern. The issues of climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic could not be more present nationally and beyond. Ghana, therefore, has a sharpened responsibility to ensure that we mitigate the proven downside of oil by the responsible management of its extraction and the monies garnered from it. Ghana's population is less than one million people. And in light of decades of outward migration, it is incumbent, therefore, on the PVP regime, in particular, to offer security and a sustainable future to those Guyanese who have remained. This security cannot be only about elections, as important as that is, but rather about wellness and well-being as a whole of our people. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed many fault lines in our health system and our access to information. Our death rate of 368 today is too high. Our infection rate of over 16,000 is too alarming and our vaccine rollout is too slow. May is now the deadliest month with 69 deaths. In fact, today alone there were seven deaths as a result of COVID-19. We of the AP and UAFC Coalition are redoubling our efforts and encouraging others to join our national push for increased vaccinations as we can't afford to lose another citizen in this country. I take this opportunity to commend the effort of our doctors, our nurses, and our health workers who have been at the forefront of our fight against this virus. Today, they should be recognized as national heroes. They go well beyond the call of duty to save lives and ensure essential services are maintained. I also take this opportunity to highlight the efforts of members of the disaster management teams, the disciplined services personnel, our sanitation workers, our delivery staff, our transportation and aviation personnel, providers of various services, government employees, social service organizations, NGOs, and generous citizens who have demonstrated solidarity and care for the fellow citizens. Regrettably, the 2020 general and regional elections have scarred the nation and once more opened the floodgates of vitriol, distrust, and unproductive racial stereotyping. As disturbing as it was to witness the regrettable outpouring of hatred, it has afforded us the opportunity to bring intolerance out of the shadows and deal with it decisively 
without blaming and shaming. Let us not sweep it back under the carpet, but rather commit at every level, personal, institutional, political, governmental, and social, to consciously and patriotically rid our society of this divisiveness. I cannot think of any Guyanese who does not recognize that ethnic insecurity has been the root of our historic barrier to nation building. This old colonial curse has been the millstone to a joint and just development. The People's Progressive Party regime in office since August of 2020 has engaged in a systematic assault on real and perceived supporters and appointees of the AP and UAFC Coalition's administration. The list is long. And it's not limited to the firing of public servants, the partisan discrimination in the distribution of COVID-19 relief, the sidelining of several professionals, and the unethical arrest and detention of many professionals. There are rising anxieties in this country about new and old forms of nepotism and corruption. All of this, however, pales in the face of the shocking refusal to convene parliament for the past 90 days. The notion of oneness must never mean we alone. This is certainly not what our independence heroes, the women and men of all races, work so hard to achieve in their quest for self-determination. The carefully nurtured culture of confrontational politics, fueled further today by social media, is further eroding the possibility and our capacity to build a nation. Ghana with its vulnerable coast, on which approximately 90% of our population lives, is no stranger to the destructive capacity of water. Over the centuries, this man-made coast, built by the unrecognized and undervalued work of the enslaved Africans in the first instance, has leveled time and time again the efforts of subsequent generations of Africans and East Indians in the main to make a living independent of the colonial legacy. The seawall, the mud dams, the mangroves, and the sluice, sluices constitute an integral mix that shore up our ability to live on this coast. The current destruction of mangroves, which demonstrates the failure to inform and consult with citizens as articulated in Article 13 of our Constitution, in the interest of a very narrow few, is an abandonment of government responsibility. May 26 is a significant day to remind ourselves of our national motto, one people, one nation, one destiny. This demands a commitment of all of us to equal and equitable access to decision-making and the resources of this country. As the old saying goes, one hand can clap. Finally, it is a generational duty of all Guyanese to commit to a model of economic development now that we have the financial resources. A model that should not replace the old masters with new masters who are even less concerned about our well-being. We must raise our voices, commit to new efforts as we did some 55 years ago when we hoisted the golden arrowhead. The APN UFC coalition is committed to this effort to unleash the full human potential of all Guyanese. We wish everyone a happy 55th Independence Anniversary. I thank you.